Hello everyone, my name is Nikolai Komarov. As was said, I'm an expert in online marketing. I also have an IT background. So I thought uh, I know enough to tell you today about such thing as uh, personal privacy and about big companies who collect personal data about you. We will discuss uh, what kinds of companies there are, what kind of data they collect, why they do it, and should you be scared about it. Um, please raise your hand if you use Google. <laughs> oh, good. And if you sometimes use Windows from Microsoft. Yes. Okay. Is there anyone who doesn't use uh, Microsoft or Google products, who doesn't have a cell phone based on Android? Anyone? Oh, good. So, at least 99.99% uh, of the uh, auditory is uh, interested in the topic, so I will proceed. Um, the big companies can be divided into two uh, important groups. These are uh, search engines and the social networks. Um, the main uh, search engine by Alphabet company is the Google.com. Uh, there is also Bing with a smaller market share. And uh, not only global players are here, but also some locals who work in China or Russia. I will mention it later. I will tell you why I mention it now. And uh, the other group is uh, social network companies like Facebook, Link LinkedIn, Google Plus, and other. Uh, first, let's talk about the search engine engines. What do you know about the data they collect about you? Just speak it up loudly. Yes, just? Uh, uh, nearly everything that you search your account and Google uh -huh. they uh, also are interested in which keys you type and which times and milliseconds and success uh, things you, you have in your mind before you find it. So. Yes, so the search terms, um, the sites you visit, what else? I just want to find out what else you know. Voice. The voice, yes. If you have an Android device, uh, the, ways, the voice commands and searches are also stored in the company. Anything else? No location. Right. They do it using the Wi-Fi network you're connected to or the GPS data. The operating system on the phone always sends the device and the link between the Wi-Fi network you are at and the GPS position. The mobile uh, network base station, everything is collected and sent. And there is also some other stuff that is uh, saved. It all started in the 90s and uh, all this data also was completed with different other stuff because uh, companies are very interested in having a very complete and specific, a very detailed profile of yours. That's why, for example, Google has added um, a social network, they created Google Plus in order to uh, see your activity. They created uh, several services and products for you that all are also tracking all your activities, your interests, your everyday life. And so the whole list is pretty scary. Everything you do, everything you watch, the, the music, the video, the places, even the emails that you have on the gmail.com in your inbox, uh, they are also used for some reason. Uh, I would also mention that there is about 1 billion Gmail users around the globe right now. Please, your question. Is it true that, uh, for some Google mail, does skim our mails written or anything uh, that relate, is related to our mail? Um, they skim the content, analyze it, and save it? Yes, everything. Right. Uh, all your contacts in the inbox, uh, all the emails, including names, phone numbers, different keywords, everything is indexed and stored. And I'll tell you later why. And, um, as I said, uh, for example, Google has developed a lot of services like Translate, Play, Home, Hello, Photos, Contest, Calendar, Keep, Dots, Sheets and Drive, and many others, just in order to make your profile really detailed. Scary. Yeah. Now the social networks. They have a little uh, different approach. You log in every day, you talk about your activity, you post, you like, you share, you are a member of different groups, 
you are also uh, a creator or moderator, maintainer of some group or fan page. You also like videos, tell where you're traveling to, uh, what you've done yesterday, where you're going to go. They know everything about you. But uh, despite of the uh, search engines, they also have a lot of information about people around you uh, because they know who your friends are and you're mostly even if you don't really tell anything about you they still know to which uh, um, circle you belong and they can probably tell that you are doing similar things as your friends do so they also know um, everything like that but a little bit more and how it works First, in the 90s, uh, uh, everything started really from good intentions. Uh, no, nobody likes to log in every time they use some site. You had to type it and then you close the page, open it again, you have to type it again. That's really stupid. But So the, there was a little technology created that was called cookie files. First time you log in, you get a little file that is stored by a browser on your computer and there is a secret key that your browser sends again so that you don't have to log in again manually. And then uh, smart guys from big companies uh, found out that it makes sense and it's profitable to pack up these files with different uh, IDs of yours to track you. When you move somewhere, a special code on every page, it asks uh, the browser what kind of file you have, what IDs you have there, and it can easily say that it is you who visited the site. So now, um, such pieces of code that track you, they are included in every web page, in every free app you use, in the operating system components, um, also in every kind of software. Yes. Isn't Telegram encrypted? So how come it's tracking the activity as well? How does that work if it's an encrypted message service? Well, Telegram. <coughs> It's an interesting feature that they uh, encrypt your messages, and it's probably true because it's very important for their image to sustain that. But they have all the opportunity to get all the IDs of the hardware you use, I mean the phone, the, they also know the uh, mobile phone of the SIM card you have, and all the stuff. They, uh, mm, they have the opportunity, they don't use it right now to, to get uh, profit because they are only growing to get their market share but they are going to use it later because nobody can do everything for free and not uh, make profit from it forever uh, and then uh, all this data is, is uh, uh, uploaded to the uh, data centers where it's processed and sold so uh, that's the question if, uh, if it's more some kind of high-tech crime that our government cannot prevent? Or is it a good thing? That's the question. I'll tell you, uh, I have an um, online marketing company and uh, we make ads for our customers, so I know how it looks from the advertiser's side. Um, I will tell you how it looks. Advertisers don't really see uh, exact information of every user. Uh, the whole data is divided by little groups, by little sectors, and uh, as an advertiser I have access to different groups and these sectors, so that I could show my ads only to people who are mostly interested in that. But I don't have access, I cannot uh, kind of request Marie Petrova or someone and uh, check everything about her. That's impossible, so breathe out. But still, uh, there are some tricks that could help me use it in a non-standard way. As an advertiser, I know I can uh, use following criteria uh, to select who I want to show my ads to. That's everything you see, including uh, age group, sex, uh, parental and marital status, uh, list of uh, websites you use, so I can catch you there. And, uh, coming back to this Gmail stuff, uh, Google provides us as advertisers an opportunity to show ads to people who have specific keywords, phone numbers, website names, emails, and everything that is contained there. If I specify it, my ads will be shown to these people right in their email boxes. 
that's a uh, pretty advanced technology. It helps uh, to really reach people with very specific interests. But also, I can upload my own uh, phone uh, numbers or emails that I collect so uh, somewhere. Google doesn't check if it was done legally and show these ads to this list of people. So basically, I can uh, parse data from some web catalogs or some, maybe I can download a database uh, hacked from some resource. You know, Yahoo had the linkage of user base and then just show uh, ads to people who I'm interested in. Um, the same thing with Facebook and other uh, networks. Uh, they don't take any money from their users, but they sell their interests. So I, as an advertiser, pay for that, pay for this specific access, and it is in the interest of the social network to uh, provide me with every possibility to, to see the very specific group of people I want to, that I'm interested in. Um, that's pretty the same stuff. And now, also, uh, search engines try to get to this area of, of, of social networks. Social networks integrate search. Uh, communicators build something like internal social networks and vice versa. Everything's mixed so that they could get everything from you for free. But still you have uh, an opportunity to check what kind of data is saved on Google. You can see what locations, searches and everything you had. The same thing on Facebook, you can manage that, you can delete parts of data that you don't want to belong to Google anymore. And uh, the reason why these companies uh, keep this data manageable by you, why they allow you to uh, delete your account, why they uh, tell that they will delete everything if you request it, is yeah, okay, right. They won't delete it uh, really, but uh, that's because of the technical limitations. But in general, um, they keep your data and try to protect it so that no bad guys, including government, could use it. Because your trust, uh, their reputation, that's what their business is built on. And uh, you know the recent uh, scandals with NSA and other secret services who actually monitor users? They are also, for them, it's just a contact. They can get all the details from social networks. So, till the last years, they also uh, were listening to the traffic between data centers of big companies to get the inside data. And companies try to protect themselves from them. They encrypt the channels, they uh, improve security so that um, no one could do it without a court order. And so, um, to some extent, you can actually be sure that uh, your data will be sold in such an anonymous way and that it will not be just given to government goods or some bad guys in, in such a detailed, personalized way. Um, okay, now I'll uh, just touch some ways of protecting yourself if you're still not uh, happy with this situation. <laughs> I'm not sure if you are. Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, there are two kind of ends of this range. You can be either um, a person who doesn't care about his personal data, who posts everything about him and then, for example, says I will travel to Hawaii next week and then your flight gets robbed. <laughs> who is guilty? You are. The other uh, end of this range is to be a total paranoid, only use paper and uh, use any electronic devices or reset your mobile phone every day two times or something. Uh, it also makes life inconvenient, you will do everything slowly and uh, I'll try to offer you some um, instruments, some means, some strategies to, to keep uh, the balance between your, um, your personal data protection and uh, the comfort and the efficiency that modern tools give you. So the first part is uh, trying to use uh, independent services or services by foreign companies who don't really have uh, a possibility to sell your data to someone. For, 
example, if you live in Germany, you can use uh, Russian uh, companies, apps and uh, search. There is a Russian company called Yandex. It does, it's like Russian Google, there are also contacts, maps, uh, search, social network, mail, and different other things that this company won't really... Well, there are only several companies in Russia who might be interested in your data as a foreigner. Um, and uh, other thing is uh, using some independent products from Mozilla Foundation, Firefox. Um, they earn by sending people to Google, Google pays them for searches, but there is no such extensive tracking module in Firefox as there is in uh, Google Chrome, so you will send less data to Google. Also, an alternative to Gmail, it's also free, but you'll see how much it's stuffed with the ads, but at least they are not so tightly connected to other big guys. Um, another pretty interesting option is not to use uh, American uh, devices, uh, to use the Chinese things, and Korean, because they uh, try to reach, uh, to get some market share from, from Google, and they uh, give you an opportunity to install only the least part of the Android operating system without Google services at all. They have their own service for contacts, for calendar, mail and all the stuff, and you can have, uh, well, if you're not an international criminal, then uh, the US government is not interested in such users. It, it's not worth to break in such a phone, and uh, it's just too complicated. The same with Samsung. Um, another big topic is encryption. You know, uh, there are less and less open Wi-Fi connections, Wi-Fi networks around the globe, but still, uh, point attention, at least don't send uh, sensitive data, passwords and stuff over open uh, networks, always use the protected ones. Uh, you can also have uh, an Opera browser, uh, an independent producer who has a uh, built-in uh, VPN client. It is a component that connects you to some distant point and every other external resources see you as if you were there at that distant point, not where you are. So it also adds up a little to your anonymity and makes your image a bit fuzzy. Um, the same thing about protection is about uh, secure protocols with websites. Um, the good news is that Google also uh, struggles to let all the site owners make it encrypted because it also solves some problems for Google. Um, and the, the same with clients of email clients, messengers and all the other stuff. If possible, use Telegram, not WhatsApp, that is belong to Facebook and not Instagram that belongs to Facebook. Use independent tools more so that they know about you less. And I think uh, a couple of last things is... I really have to learn how to do that. Um, in every browser there is an anonymous mode where you open a new uh, folder and uh, a new tab and in this tab the browser knows nothing about you or at least close to that. And you can also use a Tor browser which is designed, it's, this is its own, its only function to make you as more, as more anonymous as possible. Um, so that if you're looking for something dirty, <laughs> that's your choice. But not only. Um, also, just register several different domain names, make several emails, and use a separate email, uh, separate sites for different areas of your life. If you share, uh, um, if you can communicate to uh, different groups of people send these ones this email to these ones this email. I, for example, have a, an own domain name, you'll see it at the end of the presentation, and I give everyone his own personal email address, address. so if he, the database of the company is broken, I start receiving spam, I know instantly who lost it or who sold it, and they can block it and stop receiving emails for this address. And also, you can split everything you can, so domains, emails, uh, phone numbers, devices you use, 
just uh, don't let them collect this uh, unified image and know much about you. Uh, now you have an opportunity to ask me some questions. Please. Yes. What about Apple? About what? Apple? Apple? Is it bad? <laughs> yes, they are. Not in such a big way. Also, Microsoft is not that bad right now because they failed to share this search market with Google. They failed to make their own phones and they have a different business model. They earn more on, speaking about Microsoft, they earn more on the corporate clients. And Apple just sells really special things to really rich people.